Ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Welcome to the ring now, the challenger from Omaha, Nebraska, Terence Bud Crawford. He said he was expecting a very hostile reception. He said he's been expecting this for the last six or seven months because he knew he was going to have to come here and take that title. He said it wasn't going to bother him one little bit. But these are the questions that have to, ask, that have to be asked about Terence Crawford. What's his heart like? Can he go 12 rounds, which he's never done before? And how will he deal with a howling crowd that are booing everything he does and cheering everything his opponent does? So far, Jim, looking at the body language, he looks like it's ready. And he said all week, this is my time, is it? It could well be. I mean, he does have the style of getting his liable to get there, Ricky Bob's nightmares. I've got a feeling he's done his reputation on what people think he's capable of, but rather than what he has already done. Look through his record, he hasn't done anything that Ricky Burns wouldn't have done equally as well, or maybe even better. There's nothing that stares out of his record to say this guy you know, is a shoe in to be a world champion tonight. He had things have gone pretty much all his own way throughout his career. He's never had his back to the wall, and you don't find out about a fighter's character until their back is to the wall. But I think his back is going to be firmly against the wall tonight, and we'll see how he copes with that. I think it may be a fight that Ricky doesn't enjoy too much in the early stages. His courage, his strength and his tremendous fitness will start to take over from the halfway stage forward. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Well, look how much he's taking his time getting to the ring, enjoying it. Really lapping this up, soaking it up. He's got a pretty big entourage have come with him from Omaha, Nebraska. He's aiming to become the first born and raised Omaha fighter to win a world title. Max Bear, of course, was born in uh, Omaha and raised in California. So this fella looking to be the history man. I mean, there does look a little bit of strain on his face. He's put on a fairly good act. But I'd be worried about him if he wasn't keyed up at this stage of a challenge, you know, halfway across the world for a world title. But I can see some strain in his face there. He's maybe not the ultra confident young man that he's been putting forward. You can all act the part, but this is the top thing. And here comes the defending champion as the boos continue to cascade around the place. Those boos will be turning to cheers any moment now. Ladies and gentlemen, when a country has a hero, he welcomes him home like this. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky to appreciate just how extraordinary this welcome is. And if this doesn't buy you up, nothing ever will. Ricky Burns in double figures for world title fights. Yes, he's ridden his luck, especially in the last fight against Ray Beltran when he showed that tremendous heart and courage and determination. He's going to need all those qualities tonight. And that is one significant difference between the two men. Terence Crawford, no world title experience, no 12-round experience. This fella, 10 world titles, in double figures now. Look how relaxed he looks. And he had a bunch of championship, a British championship and Commonwealth title fights as well. If experience counts for anything, that's in Ricky Burns' corner tonight. Well, Rick is entitled to come out here confident to keep because he has done it. He has performed at one level. He has come off the floor to win a world title fight. He has been the underdog and still come out the winner. He has done it all. But he's facing a man who has not, who cannot say that. 
problem is that against the last two opponents who have been slick and clever, Ricky has struggled a bit, and we're expecting pretty much the same from James Crawford tonight. It's a tough one also to come back from a broken jaw injury. It's also horrendous. Hopefully that is not on his mind, but he has a lot on his plate tonight. This is going to be a difficult night for him. Yeah, they both came in comfortably at the weight. There's a reach advantage from for, for Terence Crawford. It'll be interesting to see if he's able to exploit that as well. 26 years old, he's four years younger than his opponent. But look at the difference in rounds there. Ricky Burns, 281, Crawford, 81. And a lot of those rounds have been at championship level. You go back eight years to any box. Alex Arthur for the British title. Alex won that night and won pretty handily, but Alex was impressed and remembered. A young man heading in the right direction. All our pundits fancy Ricky Burns tonight. The bookies don't. Crawford, 11 to 4 on. But if you fancy value, look at the money you can put. You can get on Ricky Burns to win by a stoppage. 7 to 1. we play you a very, very familiar song to this great nation. The supervisor joining us is a former Olympic gold medalist and a former WBO super featherweight champion from Hungary, Istvan Kokovic. Our steward in charge from the British Boxing Board of Control is Mr. Bernard Connolly. Our timekeeper at the bell is Mr. Jim Kirkwood. And the three men in charge of scoring this World Championship contest. Our judges are from Hungary, Zoltan Nijeri. From the Philippines, Salvin Lagombe. And finally, from Mexico, Alejandro Lopez Cid. 
And when the bell rings and the action begins, the man in the middle, the man in charge from Puerto Rico, Luis Pavon. This is the moment you've all been waiting for, so here we go. The challenger fighting out of the right corner. He's wearing the red, white, and blue trunks and weighed in at nine stone, eight pounds, six ounces. He's undefeated. 22 contests, 22 wins, 16 inside the scheduled distance. He comes to the ring as the undefeated NAVO lightweight champion from Omaha, Nebraska. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Terrence Bart. A hero to a nation, a legend to a country, and now he is the champion. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks, trimmed with white and gold. Weighing at nine stone, eight pounds, four ounces, 39 fight record, 36 wins, 11 inside the scheduled distance, just two defeats and one draw. He comes to the ring of the former undefeated WBO Super Featherweight Champion of the world. He is now the reigning and defending WBO Lightweight Champion of the world! Derek Star, Ricky Fans! for the WBO Lightweight Championship of the World! Okay guys, I give you the closure in the dressing room. They're having a clean match. Good luck and God bless you. So here we go. Ricky Burns once more into the hot seat. And this one could be boiled down very simply. This could be a battle of skill versus will. Crawford so slick he's the man with the skill but the heart and the hunger and the desire and the bravery and all those other qualities we've seen in Ricky Burns Second belong time. in the champion's corner and you can be sure that Burns will be looking to test this man's heart as much as anything word out of the Crawford camp was that their man tends to start slowly and build up ahead of steam that could be a red herring because as you say Jim you look at his card you look at his record you can barely find any rounds he's lost. You know, if it starts slowly, he certainly doesn't take punches in the early rounds, even his brother. So this is uh, the first look at him in the flesh. So you can see already he's slick, guys. Bum's getting the jab off nice and quickly. He's trying to work out the range at the moment, not committing himself quite right. Right hand blocked off there as well. Burns looking to throw it, Crawford saw him coming, Crawford just a little bit tentative with his own jab at the moment, he's looking for range finders at the moment, nice little right hand to the body there from Burns, Luke looking for another one, and that's the thing, even though that second one missed, listen to the reaction from the crowd. See when you have an opponent travelling halfway across the world, you don't want him to gain his confidence, you want to go on his case as soon as you can, and Ricky's just done that with that right hand, that was clever, I did stop from, from Crawford there. Yeah, fast hands. Switch the point of attack very quickly indeed. Oh, I could left jump too. And He's quick. And a right to the body as well. And Crawford is starting to settle down here. Rick is holding up close. A little bit of the elbow, the, the forearm. So that's good. He gets an early warning. If he does it again, we can see points coming off. And the referee letting both fighters know that he is in charge of this one. Well, a two little burst there from Crawford is the best work we've seen in this round so far. Following that good right hand from Burns, as he's worked on the right hand as well. Yeah, Crawford is quick, as we thought he would be. Yeah, this is no surprise. But Burns looking to get that jab going. And Crawford replying, and with interest as well. Oh, that's nice. Sharp from the American. Yeah, that was flashy work. Uh, this is clever stuff. Leave him with the uppercut. Now that takes confidence. Burns landing a long right hand. 
The feet slipped a little bit from Crawford, but he wasn't hurt. Burns keeping his jab going as well, having some success with it. Well, the good thing about the jab is stopping Crawford from setting anything up. And just look at the stance Crawford is in. Southpaw stance. We've seen this before from Crawford. He's happy to switch here. Burns just out of range at the moment. Packed out at the SECC, both men having some success in that opening session. Crawford catching the eye, but Burns sticking to that jab and having some success with it too. They're not allowed to slot them in the opening round, but a couple of it, you know, flashy busts from Crawford midway through the round, maybe just got enough to steal it. Not an awful lot happened in the opening. Scouting mission. And Ricky Burns will be just happy to get that first round underway because for all the sparring you do and he's had real good quality sparring you've heard Luke Campbell's been in with him Kevin Mitchell he had a wonderful week down in Essex at the Tony Sims gym and he finished off up here with Lee Selby who is sitting ringside to support him they've become good mates talking of good mates he's worked with David Brophy they've often been sparring partners together Tyro Nurse has been very involved as well and he's brought a strength and conditioning coach into the uh, into the into the uh, mix as well, Ricky. You know, I don't see this South Boss stance as an advantage uh, to Crawford. I don't think he looks all that comfortable with it. Hasn't done anything. I wonder with who he's confusing. This is better from Burns. Most of the work we're seeing is out of range from both men. But no, I don't know that I fancy Crawford as a South Boss. Yeah, moving very well, but just not throwing very much, and when he does, he's out of range. Oh, around the counter there, that missed. Now both of them trying to lock and load here. Burns out of range again. It is tough to tag cleanly, Crawford. Once again, Burns launches in, but there's nothing there. And Burns is kind of reaching with his punches, but there's not much coming back from Crawford. He's taking his time here. I mean, they're boxing away from home. You know, you don't want too many close rounds, and there's nothing to split them so far in this one. Crawford being very circumspect in this round. Still staying in the south coast stance as well. Nice, nice from Burns. Nice. Yeah, and the crowd spotted that and liked it. Of the round so far, and there haven't been too many landing. And Crawford finds his attack blocked off. Well, I don't know that uh, Crawford has lived up to the height quite so far. I know it's early days as yet. But not this is good stuff from Burns. Struggling to find the range, Burns, but there's nothing come back from Crawford here. Well, that's the point, isn't it? Neither man is having an awful lot of success because Burns is launching in, got through that time with the jab. But Burns certainly busier. But very, very few punches landing cleanly from either man. And Crawford really just drifting through this round. But he's got his jab working there, that was good. I'm surprised that uh, Crawford has stopped with this south post stance. I don't see that he uses it as an advantage in the slightest. OK, you want a drink? All right. OK, do not overstretch. Speed, speed, speed kills. He's no faster than you, you're faster than him. Well, I expected some uncomfortable moments uh, for Ricky Burns early, and we're not seeing too many of those. Seconds. That was a decent run for him, the second. A lot of work from both men out of range. But I thought the better work did come from Burns. And that was interesting what Billy Nelson, Ricky Burns' trainer there, said. Speed kills and you're faster than him. And now he's switched out, at least for now, out of the southpaw stance. Because that was one of the, re the scouting reports on Terence Crawford, that he was fast and going to be faster than Burns. Nice shot again from Burns. 
that's the second yeah. warning for Crawford, so the referee's on his case, which is good news. And he reacted like that to being caught by a right hand from Burns. And again, nice left this time. And once again, Crawford, when they tie up, gets a flurry of punches going, but a lot of them around the back of the head. See, the trick for Burns is not to throw single punches against a counter puncher. You've got to put them together, and as he's trying to counter, then you're going to catch him in the second or the third. So that was clever stuff, the jab working well too yeah, for Burns. That was a clever jab right there. A little grin on uh, Burns' face there. Crawford back in South. Crawford back in South Paul. to land a left of the body there that Burns blocked off. Yeah, a lot of upper body movement from Crawford. There's always something going on, but there's no end product, or very little end product. No end product there from Burns as Crawford was too slick for him. And Burns this time finding his punches blocked off. A lot of uh, a lot of work being neutralised for both fellas here. You know, I would have expected when Ricky missed as wildly as that, he would have been punished for it. Uh, so as I was saying, I'm just wondering if the reputation that Crawford brings over is maybe what people think he can do as opposed to what he's actually been doing. But nothing fearsome about his technique from what we've seen so far. A lot of missing, but uh, Burns is working that little bit harder. Crawford not putting on the kind of dazzling performance we were expecting, that's for sure. Got caught there though, Burns. And again, Crawford just saying, come on in, so that counts here, and Burns showing patience, getting out of the way, not being drawn into Crawford's game. Okay, to miss there though, caught him with a left hook on as they, as they held. Easy rounds to score these because there's so many punches from both men missing. Yep, there's so much missing, they're both missing. Uh, Crawford has dug in a couple of short counter punches. Certainly, neither man taking the fight with the scruff of the neck. Burns is trying to get some control, whereas Crawford is doing the fancy, the sleek stuff. Not hard to split them there, need a couple of shots from Crawford. Use it more often. Not an empty seat in the house at the SECC. It's sold out very quickly indeed. Yeah, a lot of missed punches there. I mean, asking which one do you think would be impressing the judges? Well, Burns is the one forcing things, trying to make things happen. So hopefully we start seeing a little bit more quality from these guys. Well, I thought Burns edged the second. But as much as he was pressing, as you say, Jim, didn't land anything of any real meaning in that third round. And Crawford, when he landed, which wasn't that often, it did catch the eye a little bit more. So Burns still playing this waiting game, not getting drawn into the counter-punchers game. And Crawford staying with that southpaw stance still. Well, if I was in Crawford's corner, I'd be telling him this is not the way you win world titles abroad. He's not doing enough. Nice. Good right hand Good to right Burns. Hand. Single punch, though. But Crawford comes looking for him again, and when Burns has landed, Crawford's always looked for a response, and it's Crawford that's coming up with a response here. And getting through, and Burns is backed up for the first time in the fight, and they he targeted where that broken jaw was there. Crawford with a left hook, and Burns shaken up and getting punched around the ropes here. And then he digs in, but that was a really good spell for, for the American. But Burns comes back at him. And if Crawford thinks he's going to win this by one sustained assault, he's got news coming to him. Well, there's certainly a big improvement in the visitors' work there, forcing Ricky to cover up. Yeah, now we're seeing a bit, a bit of ambition from Crawford. This is much better. Crawford binding his time, biding his time. Let me just remember that fight 
not so long ago up here against uh, Jose Gonzalez. When Burns lost six of the first seven rounds, he still came back and found a way to win. He's not finding the range at the moment, Burns. I, I wonder if the, the south cost has, I wonder maybe if they've prepared for a switch hitter or not. I still think Crawford is better off the docks, but he's obviously causing problems for Burns, but not coping with the south cost stance all that well. I'm pretty sure they did prepare for a switch hitter. There's enough film out there of Crawford boxing out of Southport. Well, all the sparring partners I heard there, Ricky's camp, talking about were orthodox, so I don't know. Luke Campbell. Keeping the jab going here, Burns. that assault in the middle of this round I think the judges might remember when the bell goes at the end of this one and again yeah. the jabs of Burns too many of them just getting blocked off champion. now he's going to face a real champion the next eight rounds okay let's get this work hard work okay hard work get nothing without grafting Ricky Mike <laughs> Corners, ten seconds. The clean punches in that round uh, it did come from Crawford. And that was a terrific down, burst. Five. Just here, he got the first time that I've seen of anyone dominating, but not overly impressed with him. It'd be interesting to see what would happen if Burns was to really go through the gears here, see if Crawford could go with him, because he obviously likes to fight in bursts at his own pace, the American. Burns needs to get him out of that comfort zone. through there, Burns. I think Burns wants to you know, be putting punches together, single shots. You can't really expect to catch this fellow with it. The good news is that uh, he's not hanging around for any counters. Oh, he's going with a right-hand counter there, Burns. Crawford walked onto that, got caught again. This is better from Burns, and Crawford comes in and looks to attack the body and gets... Gets swatted for his pains. Burns standing with him. And that's knocked him out of, out of Southport. And here he comes again. Looking for the big assault on the ropes. Not doing an awful lot of damage there, but Burns has got to try and find something to, to come back with. Again, I see him as more impressive from the orthodox stands. Crawford. Look, he's giving as good as he's getting at the moment. And unloading here, though, Crawford. And again, with how much success. Burns doing a pretty good job covering up there. Crawford is looking the busier at the moment, though. Yeah, that attack from Burns has sprung him into action, but can he stay busy? He slipped inside that right hand. Didn't come out of nowhere, Terence Crawford, who's a very decent amateur, has wins over Danny Garcia and Mikey Garcia, amongst others. He's on the fringe of the Olympic picture as well. Quite the quality we expected to see, you know, a lot of punches missed, a lot of untidy clinching after they've missed. Not really putting their stamp on this as yet. It's another warning to the visitor, so... Well, he must be close to getting a point removed. Yeah, a nice fake with the eyes there. That was really clever, that from Crawford, and he's got him in trouble here. I wonder if Ricky has confidence in his chin the way he covers up like that. You know, really, there are times when he should be letting punches go. These little eye-catching busts could be stealing it. But Jim, you go back, to, but go back to that Good assault from Crawford as he continues it here. He looked down at Burns' body and then switched it as he was looking down to go upstairs, and Burns didn't expect it. And again, Burns loading up and missing, and Crawford, Crawford is edging his way ahead here, yeah, noticeably the, now. The impressive stuff in this round has come from Crawford, not a lot of it, but it came from him. Crowd still believing in the champion. But damage 
to the side of the right eye and Dave Coldwell the cuts man is going to work on it you know I'm just wondering the way Ricky really gets tucked down behind that tight defense I wonder maybe psychologically at the back of his mind he's worried about that job I mean, it was a horrendous break see this is impressive stuff this is enough to win a round where not an awful lot other stuff is happening unfortunately the impressive stuff and don't stay so and long a couple in the of these again. rounds have come from Crawford along the ropes. Yeah. <laughs> so mostly this is precautionary that there's not too much damage in there Billy Nelson brought Tony Sims into the corner for this one so Ricky Burns boxed in the Sims gym doing some sparring with Kevin Mitchell and others and uh, Billy was big enough to say I want an extra pair of eyes in here with me Tony would you come and join me and Tony was happy to do so Just signs, and they're increasing signs now that that Crawford is is starting to get comfortable in there. And Burns needs to knock him out of that. His body shot wasn't the best, but he's still a bit wild here, Burns. He needs to put punches together. He needs to try and shorten his punches a little bit. Just not point his heels there, more balance than anything else. But Crawford with a really nice uppercut got in there, testing that jaw again. Short there. Some eye damage, the right eye for Burns. Fast hands again, switching from body to head and back again from Crawford. And then again, Ricky's looking a little bit uncomfortable in these exchanges. We're used to seeing Ricky Burns taking the fight to opponents and putting it on them. We're not seeing it tonight yet. And there is confidence growing from Terence Crawford. You can sense it, you can hear it in his corner as well. I think oh, that's really good work from the American. A yeah, good body shot to finish that little burst off from Crawford. And Crawford's looking the confident one at the moment. He's looking the governor right now. And there's less and less coming back from Ricky Burns. And Crawford has him pinned up against the ropes again, looking for the holes in the defence. Nice uppercut in there again. That's a couple of those that uh, Ricky Burns has taken in this round. I mean, Ricky has always had so much confidence in his punch resistance. I just wonder if it's missing at the moment. I mean, that was a horrendous injury and he's, getting, he's come back from. He's getting tagged cleanly far too often for this crowd's liking. And Crawford just looks so relaxed now. And he's bossing this gym. The punches are flowing. He's right upon the balls of his feet. And he's exactly where he wants to be right now, Terence Crawford. Well, a couple of rounds that were difficult to score, but this one hasn't been. Crawford definitely has looked the boss here. Back in the south ball. Switching again. Daring Burns to come in. Burns not buying it. Well, back he comes out into Orthodox and then nothing happens. Now Burns digging in deep and there was a clash of heads there right on the bell. I don't think Crawford's too bothered about that either. Well, as you say, Jim, some of those early rounds were, were a bit close to score, but not the last few. Not the last couple. Given to hard. Crawford, he's starting to look the boss, which is a little bit alarming. It's about three each, Ricky. It's about even now. Okay. Yeah, as they go to work well, in the corner. Meanwhile, in this crowd, in this corner, Terence Crawford looking very, very relaxed indeed. Yeah, a couple of times uh, Burns looking uncomfortable there, not taunt his heels there. So Crawford looking as confident as I've seen him tonight. A couple of decent rounds under his belt now. Round seven. Burns slipping behind. 
Needs to start mounting a comeback here. Nice left hook from Burns, close in. He has to try to put punches together, you know, feed him with this jab and trying to stay out of range at the same time. He's got to commit himself when he lets punches go, you know, he's trying to get the punches off and get himself out of there. He's got to commit himself a bit more. And Crawford starting to use that reach as well. Again, That's the second warning for the yeah. four arms, so one more, we'll see a point coming away. He's been one for a few different things, but that's the, the second time of it, the forearm. And now he's looking at the referee course if they hold him. has to follow with the right hand. Yeah, the jab's falling short as well. And and it, it's going to take more than a single punch to put this fella on the floor as well. Burns has really got to put some kind of a stained attack together. The sort of attacks that we see coming every round from Terence Crawford. I mean, this cup defends against the ropes. If he's doing that against Beltran, but that was because of the broken jaw. I just wonder if he doesn't have the confidence in that jaw now. He really, at times, is looking uncomfortable. And the more uncomfortable Burns looks, the happier Terence Crawford looks, and he's just teeing off pretty much as he wants. Working head and body. gap between them is just getting wider and wider and that summed it up for Burns miles away with a right hand a bit of blood coming from the nose of the Scot looks like another night Jim when Ricky Burns is going to come have to come from a long way back if he wants to hang on to this belt it's just a lack of confidence in his work that's worrying me. I mean, falling behind in points, I expected him to do that against this fellow. The fellow is not as good as I expected him to be. But uh, Ricky doesn't have the confidence, and he's not giving it everything the way we're used to see him doing. Just watch right on one there. Crawford jab getting through the guard, but so often the Burns jab is blocked off, and there's a little cuffing right hand as well for his pains, and Burns, I think, felt that again. Well, Burns is backing off every time he takes a shot. I don't want to go on about this job, his... But, I mean, he's taking punches, not full, full-blooded shots, but he's backing away from it. And then this could onto the ropes with the hands up. I mean, that's just saying to the judges, give that round to Crawford. Well, we've got Glenn, Luke and Alex at ringside. How are you seeing it, fellas? Well, I'm seeing it for Crawford for, by three rounds. He's got the momentum. He's starting to push. He's letting his, his shots go. And as Jim says, it just looks as if Ricky's just got something in his head where he's scared to engage. He's scared to take the fight on and scared to push forward. Needs to change, needs to do something now. Well, me and Luke both have, have had the fight exactly the same, so... Um, Ricky made a good start, he won the first two rounds, but he's lost the last four for us, so almost and identical. As the fight goes on, you know, Crawford's getting more confident and uh, more on his floor, and Ricky just seems to be a little bit frustrated at this point and lunging in with a couple of his shots, which is playing into Crawford's hands, really. Yeah, thanks very much, fellas. Uh, seeing it the way we're seeing it. Seconds so the gap between them is just widening now. And the level of confidence that's coming from Terence Crawford is pretty scary if you're a Ricky Burns supporter. He was up off his stool early, just ready to go back to work. This is how, I mean, you look at the tape, this is how he wins so many of his fights. He just gets his opponent under, con under control and just pecks away at him. You know, I'm wondering, is Ricky worried about the jaw or is he in pain with the jaw? I mean, he has a titanium plate in there and I'm sure it's not medical advice to go out and get a jaw punched. That was a, oh, that was a nice left hand from, from, from Burns, but look, it made no impression on Crawford, who came straight back at him. And worked in the body here, Crawford. That's a really good response from the American. But backing up the way Ricky's doing here and just putting his hands up his back to the ropes, it's inviting the well, That's a really good left hook from Crawford, and Burns is hurt again. Switching to the body, Burns covering up, but it is enough getting through here. Sickening punches from Crawford and that, Burns in trouble on the ropes. Now, this is not Ricky Burns, there's something wrong. 
I say I wouldn't go on about the job, but there's something really missing here from Ricky Burns, and I can only imagine he's in pain here. Look at the way he's covering up, he's not thinking about offence. He's allowing the initiative to be taken away from him. This is the way he fought against Beltran when the jaw was broken. So brave. Well, nobody ever questioned his bravery. Really tough, tough guy. And Crawford has been sticking it to him a bit in these last few rounds. And the most worrying thing for me is he landed that really good left hand burns and look what he got back from Crawford. And look how long Ricky's taken there without throwing a punch. It's just a lack of confidence, a lack of commitment, and that is not Ricky Burns. Crawford in that southpaw stance, the hands have dropped. Again, just saying to Ricky Burns, come and have a go. Punches so many have fallen short from Burns. Got a body shot in there and got out of trouble. Okay, Doubling up with the left hand again from Crawford, switch from body to head again. Now the jab starting to flow. Yeah, Rick is just forcing his boxing, you know, there, there, there's no technique or rhythm about what he's doing. And he's throwing punches out, but not committing himself to them. So they're falling short, and he's leaving himself open to the counter. Has to get in closer and shorten the punches. Crawford swaggering out of range there. If you're worried about the counter, get up close there. I love the counter from Crawford there. Too comfortable for Terence Crawford. Hey, yeah. 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 You got him? You got me. Don't worry about it. Keep the elbows in. Just keep the elbows in. Come on. We need There's to stay not an awful lot to say in here, really, is there? We need to keep... Well, Ricky's just, just complained about a body shot that he's taken. I've never heard, apart from the, the broken jaw, which he was entitled to complain about. But no, the commitment is lacking. Complaining about body shots. This is not the Ricky Burns I'm used to seeing. Good left hook there from Crawford. The eye catching stuff coming from the American. He's looking the boss. Look at this. I mean, Ricky continues to back himself to the Hold boss. Put his hands seconds. up. I mean, you're gifting the rounds to the other guy. Doing that. Out, round nine. Round nine. <laughs> it was at the end of round nine. And Jose Gonzalez finally decided he'd had enough against Ricky Burns, but there is no suggestion at all so far that Terence Crawford has had enough. Far from it. There's a bit of commitment now from Ricky. I think he's been sent out to make some sort of impression. What he's doing is not working. It's not going to start working. He's the one who has to change here. Well, he's got to find something, and he is so tough. But I can't think of one occasion in this fight where Ricky Burns has visibly hurt Terence Crawford. And you can think of plenty where it's the other way around. Listen to these fans. Unbelievable support for Ricky Burns. But where is the charge that we expect from Ricky Burns? Punches round behind the back, not on the target. just to dictate the terms not everything landing but he's just keeping Burns off balance and out of range Burns looks to land an inside right hook there just grimaced as they as they came together there as well and he's short again with that jab and again there's a little drop in the American's pace as well at the moment He's up close there, but not really getting the punches off. Well, we always see a response from Crawford when Burns does land something, and we're seeing a response just as you said that as well, Jim. Once again, some left hooks just to test that jaw where it was broken. 
We've seen that consistently from the American. Yeah, and again, Ricky get into a shell and allowing Crawford to look the busier. Not a lot in this round. I mean, Crawford hasn't quite dominated here. But Good uppercut from Burns. But he was taking some punishment when he landed it. seen this the guard up against the ropes and then he comes out again swinging hoping to land something guts the effort again from Ricky Burns but sitting very heavily on his stool it's a tough he's tough night for him he's not enjoying that in there come on keep him at his comfort zone that was a much better round that's exactly right it's the only way he can win this fight Ten. I just feel that Ricky has big doubts in his mind, either he's worried about the, the jaw or he's in pain because of the jaw, but this, uh, there's something missing from the Ricky Burns that we've gotten used to in this country, missing wildly at Call times. 10 seconds. Once again, Crawford is up on his stool as soon as he hears corners 10 seconds. Ready for more, the man from Nebraska. See, but this time that you want to see a dent in the visitor, you want to see, you know, his confidence has been dented, but it's quite the opposite. Ricky yeah, has that, never been able to do that. And that's, that's turning into a landslide if your card is accurate. The last round was closer, Ricky did a little bit better, but uh, try to score with my, my, my head rather than my heart you know the good punches are still coming from the challenger and once again a little ticking off for Terence Crawford I mean I'm in two minds about Crawford and what we've seen here as you say I mean he was built up everybody built him up as, as potentially the next big thing in the division but I think he's pretty slick and smooth and I think if he does win this title he can go up a whole new level from here. Well, I think he would have to, Nick, because I'm not all that impressed, to be honest with, with him. I think the best of Ricky Burns, the Ricky Burns that beat Katsidis and the Kevin Mitchell, I'm sure would have handled this guy, but Nicky, uh, Ricky is holding back something. This is better this round, he's on the front foot. But again, he's still struggling to land anything clean. Crawford doing a very nice job of looking after himself. better he has to bring the right hand into play but he's too easily forced on the defensive too easily forced into that shell that he keeps going into and it's Crawford that puts him there though every time Burns does land something Crawford puts him in his place Burns just can't get on top in this one the crowd are trying to to lift them, a lot in this round, a lot out of range again from Crawford. He's on uh, Ricky's case now, the, the referee. And Crawford's taking the breather in this round, Nick. Oh, good shot there from him though. Yeah, he was taking a breather, oh that was a nice right hand from Burns, but once again it's Crawford woken up. See, it's the way that Ricky's forced on the defensive every time he takes a punch. We're used to see him taking a shot and coming through it. Oh, he got caught badly there as well, Burns. He sold out and got caught on the counter. And it's going to take an awful lot to put Ricky Burns out of this one. Never been stopped. And how many times has he had to climb off the floor? Amazing fight with Carl Johansson. 
A big grin from Ricky Burns at the end of that one. Crawford's not smiling. I'm not sure what Ricky Burns has got to smile about. Tough, tough Good. night. Back, back. You can't tell. See when he's backing up, you need to let them go. Clean, fast, accurate punches, Ricky. Look at me. Look at me. Know the hooks. Straight. Straight. Most of them are straight, aren't they? Near enough. Okay. Um, and, um, get some more body shots in. I know that. He's throwing a body counter. Bring your feet in with it. Bring your feet in with it. Listen, mate. He's shattering that corner. He's bluffing. He's bluffing when you're in the middle of fire. He's walking around. He's catching a breather. And he's bluffing. That's, that's when you need to stay on top of him. You're absolutely right. Hey, two hard I don't see on the rugs, I don't try to get Bring them up. Oh, see what he's inside. You need to bring it up there, to there, him. Trying to see the way Ricky's speaking there to see if there is any disturbance of John. Not sure he hasn't complained about it, but he is complaining about being countered when he goes to the body. So obviously not comfortable, which is not surprising. Round 11. If Crawford is going to fade, it's going to be late and dramatic. Surely Burns has just got to try and find out how much has he got left in the tank. You heard what Billy Nelson and Dave Coldwell were saying. If he is running on empty, you've got to force him off the road. Yeah, well, he took a breather in the previous round, the crosser, but maybe he feels he can afford to do that. And Crawford again, flashy, eye catching. blocking off Burns' work. But Burns has had success. It's, it's been single punches. They're the ones you remember. I can't ever remember Ricky Burns really putting this fellow under any kind of sustained pressure. He responds so well to a challenge, Crawford. I'm just surprised that he's so readily forced onto the defence of Ricky, you know, getting the hands up, getting into that shell on the ropes. You know, not throwing back. The tape just coming loose on Ricky's glove. And reaching with long, wide punches again. Not prepared to get up close and shorten the punches. That's what's needed here. Get close and short, little short, straight punches. Well, Crawford's boxing like a man who feels he doesn't have to do any more than he's doing. He boxed away from home, you would expect him really to put the foot to the floor. Well, you have to leave no doubt at all. Yep, and he's, he's not doing that. I, I mean, uh, this kind of boxing has given officials an excuse to see it how they like. I mean, these little tops, okay. Ricky's missing, he's doing nothing. But Crawford certainly hasn't put his stamp on this round or the previous one. Racing again there, Crawford. Oh, nice left hand from Burns, but once again, look at the reaction from Crawford. It's been the story of the fight. Yeah, that is a big surprise, Nick, that Crawford can take it away from him so quickly. Oh, just every time, Jim, every time he's landed, you thought, that's a good shot. Crawford's responded immediately and just nullified it. Yeah, he just seems able to take it away from Ricky when he has a little bit of success. The switch from head to body and the pressure staying on here from Crawford, who doesn't look like a man that's gassed to me, not one bit. Well, Crawford is nowhere near as good as I expected him to be, but he's difficult, he's slick enough, and Nicky just, right, Nicky just can't pin him down. Right, a big three minutes here, Ricky Burns. A big three minutes. Burns, his balance going there. Look at that he's grabbing hold, he's going into the shell. But not the quality from Crawford that maybe we expected, not the, the budding superstar we were led to believe. And interesting words in the corner from Crawford as well. Brian McIntyre, his coach, said, we need this round. Now, whether that's just a bit of psychology or whether they're remembering the name of Ray Beltran, but a sense of urgency in that corner. They're sending him out to go out and win the round. 
And this crowd willing Ricky Burns on. Big smile, a smile of respect from Ricky Burns, who is one of the class acts in British boxing. But is this the last three minutes of his reign as world champion? I'd rather see Ricky come out in a bad mood and a big smile on his face. There's tape all over the place. I mean, that, that was evident in the previous round. Really, the referee should have dealt with that in between rounds. And now we can resume this last round. Not been an epic, never really quite caught fire. But again, he's rocked him, he's rocked him. And Burns in trouble again, and Crawford listening to his corner and saying, right, let's put on the big finish. And I think he might be going to try and stop Burns here. That's never happened before, but Crawford is going for it. Burns catches him with a left, but still Crawford pouring it on. Again, one punch Nick puts him totally on the defensive. And Crawford not letting go either. That was big from Crawford, who just looked at his corner as if to say, is that what you wanted? Inside the last two minutes. Uncomfortable look in Ricky's face. Yeah, a bit more discomfort after those body shots went in from Crawford as well, but Burns digging in again, and then immediately Crawford comes straight back at him. Those hooks around the back of Burns's guard. So hurtful. Well, we saw a little flash from Crawford there. That was classy stuff, that was quality. I haven't seen an awful lot of it. The referee separating him again. And once again, Burns being bullied back to the ropes comes off this time. Can't find anything meaningful again, just gritting his teeth. Pulling faces again, Nick, pulling faces. He's never looked comfortable in there tonight. Never. Last 30 seconds. And Burns again looking very, very tired. And Crawford sensing it. Well, the American camp said we need this last round. They've got that emphatically, no question. But it's going to come down to the judges from Hungary, Philippines and Mexico. How do they see it? I don't know how we see it, Jim. I don't know how the guys sitting behind us see it. And it's almost impossible to make a case for Ricky Burns tonight. Make a case for Ricky in this one. He's been hesitant, he's been uncomfortable, he's had successes here and there. But no, I think he's just glad to get through it. Big smiles from both men at the end of that one. Burns is celebrating, of course. Crawford thinks he's done enough. The lift from Billy Nelson, who's done such a great job with Ricky Burns over the years. But is this Omaha's first born and raised world champion? Jim, your card leaves it in no doubt at all. Yep, they just seem to take charge. You know, at the stage in the fight when they expected Ricky to take over, but all the way through, I felt that Ricky had problems. I'm trying to even see the way he's drinking the water there, if, he's, if his jaws working properly. But there was something missing from him all the way through. I can make a case for the scores being tight for some of the earlier rounds when Ricky was coming forward. You could have given him the benefit of the doubt, but too often the play was completely taken away from him. He backed to the ropes, cupped his hands up, tight defence as though he was protecting the jaw. And too often we saw this, we didn't see him do this to the other guy. And that's the big difference in, in, in almost every round. We saw Crawford dishing out like this. We never really saw Ricky doing that. We saw Ricky landing a couple of punches here and there, but we never saw him bully the action, take control of the, the fight. Whereas uh, Crawford did it several times. And when it mattered as well. 
when it looked like Burns was going to do something, Crawford always managed to find a response. Well, he's been a world champion, Ricky Burns, since September 2010. But is he about to become a former world champion? Well, I'm looking at the camp. I don't know if even they expect to get through this. Surely not. Well, he got the draw against Ray Beltran. He came from so far back against Jose Gonzalez. But has it run out for Ricky Burns? The cards are in. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of championship boxing, the judges' scorecards read Zoltan and Yedi scores a contest 116 112. Lopez scores a contest 117 111. And Lagambe scores a contest 116 112. All three judges are in favour of the winner and the new. Yep, there it is. Terence Crawford. Wow. Lightweight <laughs> champion of the world. A moment of history for the American. The first Omaha, first Omaha born and raised world Bravo. champion. It was thoroughly deserved. It was highly efficient. And, and no there can be no doubt about any of those three cards. No arguments tonight. None. I feel so sorry champion. for Ricky Burns because if, if you lose a world title, legend. you know, you want to have, you know, your shield, you want to produce your best performance, but the other guy was better than you. That wasn't the case tonight. Nicky, R Ricky never really got into the fight. That wasn't the real Ricky Burns here tonight. Don't know why, but it wasn't. It's been quite a ride for the last three and a half years from Ricky Burns. It really has. And, uh, he can still see the funny side, but he is now an ex-champion. A very good, slick win by Terence Crawford. It is a disappointing night in Glasgow as home hero Ricky Burns relinquishes his world crown. A performance from Terence Crawford and more reaction after the break. Ricky Burns' reign as WBO lightweight champion is over. A passionate Scottish crowd not enough as Burns is outclassed by American Terence Crawford. Both fighters speaking with Ed Robinson. Well, Terence, congratulations. Graduation night for you away from home. You're now the WBO lightweight champion of the world. How does it feel? And I'm lost for words. You haven't had much to say in the build up. You've been a quiet man. You did your talking in the ring, but an amazing achievement. You must be happy with the way it all went. Yeah, I'm happy, man, as long as I got that belt. What does it mean to you, picking up that title? It means everything. We ain't had no champion in Omaha, Nebraska in a century. Ricky, did you just lose to the better man tonight? You know, that's, where, that's where it came down to. Um, it was a tricky fight in there. Um, very awkward, um, especially with switch hitting. I, I felt it that hard to get my shots off. He was always playing with distance. But, you know, the best man went on the night, and you know, I'll be back. The first thing I... <laughs> First thing I said to Eddie after that fight was we'll be chasing for a rematch, so hopefully we can get that sorted. Was the jaw a worry during the fight? Did it go at all? Did it hurt you? I, no, I took a, one of the rounds. I took a good body shot, but I managed to recover. The last round, I took a, I took a, I took a head shot, and but again, I've showed I can, I've, I've proved that I can take it. And I said before the fight, the the, the jaw that's in the back of my mind. Um, I just went out there and got on with the fight, but the better man won on the night. Um, the, box, the box well. Good on him. How good is he? I think he's also that for yourself. Uh, just, I, can't, I was finding it hard. He was always in and out of distance all the time, especially with the switch hitting. Um, you can see why, obviously, top rank are, are touting him as the next big thing in America. Um, but again, uh, fingers crossed Eddie can go out there. There is some big fights out there for me over here as well, but my first choice would be to get the rematch. Would you be interested in a rematch, Terence, perhaps in America? Huh? Would you be interested in a rematch, perhaps in America? Oh yeah, you know, uh, talk to my promoter and everything, and we do it again. You were quite secretive beforehand. I understand that, especially in hostile territory. But talk us through your tactics tonight and how they worked. Well, that was just natural. You know, we knew Ricky had a, a nice jab, so we was trying to, you know, throw him off, you know, his jab and make him reach. And you'd never been 12 rounds before, so was that in the back of your mind at all? Because you finished strongly. No, we trained real hard for this fight, you know, just like we trained real hard for any fight, so I wasn't worried about the rounds. Ricky, you want a rematch. If that can't happen, 
would you look for another one of the champions perhaps or would you be willing to drop down to domestic level if, if, if you needed to to earn a shot? Um, I think I'd like to stay. Again, it, it's up to I'm going to leave it up to Alec Morrison, Eddie Hearn. Um, whatever fights they get for me, um, but I feel as if I'd, I'd, I belong at world level. I think I proved that tonight against uh, Terms. Um, again, the lightweight division's buzzing at world level and over here, so um, there is big fights out there. As I say, we'll just need to wait and see, but I'll be back in the gym in a couple of weeks. Ready to go. So, a word with the promoter, Eddie Hearn. Realistically, what's next for Ricky? Well, listen, I mean, firstly, hats off to Terence Crawford, like Ricky said takes a defeat like a true champion and Terence you were outstanding tonight well done congratulations to you that was Ricky Burns' 10th world title fight you know he deserves to be at world level because he's been there for so long he just came up against a very good fighter and like I said the better man won on the night with this kind of support behind him there's plenty of big fights for Ricky Burns and to come back from what he come back against Beltran with the jaw no excuses he's already told you that but he'll be back he's a great fighter he's got a great country behind him I'm going to thank everybody for coming out and Ricky Burns will be back in the summer thank you you mentioned Raimundo Beltran he wanted a shot at the title top rank pushed Crawford first but would that be a, maybe a good rematch for Ricky to earn the right to have a rematch with Crawford? Yeah, there's all kinds of big fights. The Beltran rematch, you know, the Figueroa, the WBC champion, Abril, the WBA champion, Vasquez. They're all looking for fights, and we can bring them to Glasgow. Let him have a little rest, and uh, he's got the hunger to be a champion again. That's the most important thing. You know, you can be a champion, but when you lose, you've got to have the hunger to get it back. And I know Ricky Burns has. And uh, that was a great fight. Congratulations to Terence Crawford. Thanks to everyone. But like I said, Ricky Burns will be back and he'll get another crack at the world title for sure. Ricky, if you got the rematch, what would you do differently? Um, I think some of, some of the rounds I was letting them slip away. I was letting them outwork me. Um, I was waiting just that wee bit too long to get my shots off. Um, just have to work the uprate. But again, I was saying Billy was telling me in the corner so said get the second phase of punches off. But again, when you're in with somebody as slippery as that, it's hard to because I felt as if, as uh, Terence said, I was overreaching, I was, I, he was always looking for the counters all the time, it's difficult to fight him. Um, but aye, if the three match came off, I'm right up for it. Terence, hostile reception here in Scotland, the fans very passionate, but have you enjoyed your time over here? Oh yeah, man, the fans was lovely. I ain't met not one fan that was real rude or nothing. Everybody was, you know, saying they going for Ricky, but wish me the best of luck and everybody was fine. Well done, Terence, good performance.